Guardians, what's going on ladies and gentlemen of the nation? Happy Halloween everyone and hope your plans turn out to be spook freaking tacular and if you're taking someone trick-or-treating or hell even if you're going out trick-or-treating because you're cool like that and hope you have fun and have a very safe time. Some of my best memories come from being downtown on Halloween in like various cities like throughout the US like Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Raleigh, Greenville, Nashville. It's always such a fun time when people shed their identities and strap on something new for just one night. Let all of it go and just have a good time. I think Halloween has some sort of like a therapeutic effect on people, so it's one of my favorite holidays. But that is until the next day when a bottle of ibuprofen still doesn't get rid of your hangover. But anyways, guys, welcome to the weekly reset guide, gangsters, and happy reset day to all my PC subs out there. Oh, our first reset together, the memories. <laughs> so, the start of a new week in Destiny, that means loot will await us. So let's hop into the game, get our ass up into orbit, and check everything out. Y'all ready? Alright guys, let's do this. It's Tuesday, October 31st, and this is your Destiny 2 Spooktacular Weekly Reset Guide. As always, thank you guys for watching, and keep being awesome out there. Now, I check things out on both platforms, PC and consoles, and they are indeed identical. Now, I knew activities would be, but wasn't sure about vendor stuff, and like I said, we're all on the same page here. So, it is freshly 5 a.m. here in North Carolina, and starting up here in orbit, let's check out all of our weekly milestones. As you can see, they have all turned over and your chance for loot has returned for our weekly flashpoint we are returning to the edz or for my euro friends out there the edz now for those who are on pc these powerful gear rewards the raid the exotics those are the only way to really get past the lower 260s and upwards to the power level of 300 305 blues will stop dropping at a higher light and they will kind of plateau out like cap out at a level of 260 then after that the higher you start going, they'll start dropping like 5 or 6 power levels below your character level. You use these lower level blues to get your guns kind of halfway up to where you are so that way you can use them again. Like early legendaries you just have in your vault that you, you know, have had from earlier drops. But with blues now out of the question, the only way to increase power level is to complete these powerful gear milestones. Like I said, do the raid, nightfall, and pray to RNG gods that you get a drop. Then of course there are exotics as well. One of the best ways to get exotics is to do the raid and then open the chest with raid keys. Now if you have a fire team medallion on, out of six people, you Usually three of you should get an exotic at every chest. It's actually a great way to get exotics. Also, if you're not in a clan, I would definitely recommend to try and join one, guys. These clan rewards will also help you rank up a lot, lot faster. All right, Nation, so before we head down to the tower, let's check out this week's Nightfall. Last week, we had another easy Nightfall with grenades out the yang, as well as class abilities, with an easy time modifier on top of that. So, PC players, don't get used to it being that easy every week. It's not always a cakewalk like that. This week, we have the Arms Dealer. As for modifiers, we have Prism. Your attacks matching the focused element deal increased damage. All other elemental damage is reduced. Kinetic and incoming damage is unaffected. The focused element rotates periodically. So basically, if you look at the bottom left-hand side of your screen and you see, for instance, solar, you should be using solar abilities and solar weapons, period. Don't use anything arc. Don't use anything void. Don't use your subclass unless it's going to be solar. And if you don't have anything solar, then you have to use a kinetic. Everything else will get a huge debuff and you're just going to be wasting ammo. Moving on to the second modifier this week, we have another time modifier and it's called Time Warp Killing Time. Defeat enemies to extend the mission timer up to a limit. So this particular set of mods together does make it a little more challenging, especially for PC players out there who aren't fully maxed out in terms of power and can't blow right through it, at least not yet. The deal here is pure and simple speed, guys. Killing enemies adds back time but it only adds back 2 seconds per normal red bar and 7 seconds for major or orange slash yellow bar enemies. The best way to do this is have two people always pushing forward advancing the strike while one kind of stays behind and cleans things up, of course until you get to the end. But if you see a lonely group of like 4 or 5 red bar ads on like one side of the map or the other, it's not worth your time to run over there and take 5 seconds to kill them. So you're spending 10 seconds to get back 8. It doesn't make any sense doing that. So run by the majority of them, unless of course you have to be there to advance the mission. Now if you can, go ahead and throw a grenade or shoot a rocket. Just getting one or two while you're on the way always adds back a little time. and That's really the only time you should be engaging small groups of enemies who are out of the way. The biggest tip I can give you about this strike is to take care of the Thresher ships first and foremost. And for those on PC who aren't used to this new modifier, basically you won't have all your elements covered. So 
coordinate with your team and make sure each of you have heavy of every element and an energy weapon of every element. So one of you will have void, one of you will have solar, other one will have arc. And it works the same for the other weapon type. When you see, for example, solar on the left hand side of the screen, you should not be using arc or void at all, especially supers. Elements that are not currently featured are given a temporary debuff and are super weak. If you happen to come across a time where you don't have that specific element, which will happen a lot, then use your primary or kinetic weapon. Just be careful when using supers. Always wait for your element to change over. Never pop your super by looking down and see that you're currently on your preferred element and then popping your super because odds are it's about to rotate. Once you see it change, then use it. So besides taking down the Thresher ships, save your supers for the boss fight after you get about halfway through the strike, somewhere around where the two tanks are in that room. When you make it to the end, you're going to have ships spawn again. Team fire on them to take them down quickly, and once the boss jumps up and then down from his first pillar, he will head back to the front. When he does, the middle door will open up, and it will be full of those annoying dogs. If you're a striker titan, use your super on the dogs, and then you can gain back a pretty decent amount of time by spawn killing these guys as soon as they come out, and then supering the rest of the enemies that are around there while your teammates focus on boss DPS. Once he hops back up, another Thresher ship will then spawn, kill it, and continue about like normal. One thing you do not want to do is get behind on ads. If you stop paying attention on ads for too long, they will simply just keep multiplying and the next thing you know you're overwhelmed and then your team will just keep getting killed as soon as they respawn. So try to keep up with ads while consistently doing damage. Taking a few seconds to get rid of those Thresher ships and adds will save you so much time from not dying. Those things are relentless, and since they're above you, it's hard to hide from them, and you'll get hit even though you think you're safe. Alright, Guardians, well, that's the Nightfall. Good luck. I know you got this. Just make sure you guys communicate, take out adds, take out Threshers, but keep it moving and do as much damage to the boss as you can. Only shoot them with the right element, and if you don't have that element, make sure you use your Kinetic. All right, guys, well, now we're heading back to the tower, and first up down here, we're going to start off with our lady, Tess Everest, and Eververse, along with her otherworldly good. So, starting off with emotes, first up, we have a blue rare called Huddle Up, which is actually pretty cool, guys. I mean, when you sync it up with, like, your whole raid team or team or, like, a group of friends in the tower, it's actually pretty cool to see. After that, we have an emote that I've been using on my hunter since week one. It's called Dancy Dance. It's actually kind of cool, man. It's different. That's why I like it. And besides, come on, how sweet of a name is Dancy Dance? I mean, it doesn't get better than that. <laughs> Moving on to vehicles, guys. Sparrow's up first. We have one this week called Wave Maker. Nothing really fancy about this one. It's just a Vanguard call of Sparrow. Enough said. Next up, ships. Our first one, legendary ship called Ordinate VD. It's one of those round Odyssey class ships with a pretty cool paint job. But after that, we come to our first exotic ship this week, and it's a ship called Rose and Bone. Within the Grimoire, it talks about two hunters, Dredgen Yor and Shin Maffer. Pretty cool little lore tab, but ship-wise, nothing really that special. I mean, it does look cool, but you know, they really need to add something to make these worthwhile of the exotic title. You know, like, the, even though they're exotic ships, there's other ones out there that are just not as colorful. That's it. I mean, same shape, same look, they just have a different paint scheme. So they need to spice those up a little bit. Hopefully, Season 2 will uh, take care of that. Anyways, guys, moving on, we come to our first exotic ornament. First in line is the one for the sniper rifle, Darcy, called Mind of Its Own. And honestly, guys, not really a fan of this one. It's got this crusty, faded white kind of urban wannabe camo thing and a brass silencer. Almost looks like wood. Definitely would not spend my bright dust on this. I'd save it for something else. But the next one, however, is pretty effing sweet. The ornament for Risk Runner called Summer Storm. It changes the appearance and some characteristics of the weapon. The points are gone out front like the needle-like points. They're now instead like these angled kind of knife-like protrusions. The new color scheme and the refresh to this looks really, really good. Add the fact that Risk Runner is an awesome weapon, and this one I think is definitely worth buying. Onwards to the bottom row, and first up we have our Optimacy Armor. This week we're back to the beginning of all the pieces. Arms were sold on week one when Destiny launched, and now we're back to the beginning. So, if you missed it, then now's your chance to get them back. Next up, some Ghost Shells, both legendaries. First is Tower Shell, nothing special, a little shiny. After that, a ghost you should have already been given if you made a Titan, the Titan Shell. Alright guys, and towards the end here we have our weekly shaders. Two of them are some of my favorites to use. First up, Midnight Talents. A black, white, and gold shader looks really good on vehicles and armor. After that, we have Watermelon, which is, well, watermelony. And then at the end here, Golden Trace, which is a darker shader than Midnight Talon, but it has like a carbon fiber effect to it. Works nicely on weapons and armor in certain pieces. It's definitely one of my favorites without a doubt. 
Then finally, here at the end, something no Guardian should be leaving the tower without fire team medallions. If you're opening chests in the raid, or you're going on like a strike farming mission, or you're going to do a bunch of heroic public events, you always want to have one of these activated. Okay guys, so next up, over to Ikora Ray in the bazaar and take a look at her combat meditations. Now for those who don't know, doing these can drop you tokens that rank you up with Ikora, and then in turn will drop Parade Armor, which are all the armor sets we wore at the beginning of the game and during the beta. So if you like those sets, then definitely start doing these. Also, do them on all characters, but only use the tokens on one character at a time. Working on one set at a time is a faster way to get the complete set. Alright Guardians, and the last thing to check out is the raid. Now on top of PC having access to the Leviathan today, Challenge Mode debuts today as well for the consoles. Not sure about PC, I think it will, but they weren't really specific about it. And today's challenge lies within the Bathers or the Royal Pools. Now, we really don't know much about it yet. If it's only going to be normal challenge, prestige only, I mean, both. Will it be like D1 where things stay the same, you just need to use mechanics differently, or will it add something completely new? We really don't know. We'll find out here soon at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And if everything does stay the same as it is right now, then Bathers will be our first encounter into the Leviathan. However, take that with a grain of salt because a lot of times when they add challenges or like they do something at 10 a.m. or 1 p.m. Eastern, things change over at that point. So just because Bathers is there right now doesn't mean it will not change later on today. So just be aware of that. All right, Guardian. So before we get out of here, let's show you how to get to Bathers real quick. Now, the easiest way is to use the pressure plates on the ground. This opens up a more direct route to Bathers. But because I'm alone here, I'm going to use the levers down below. If you want to see how the pressure plates work, check out my Skip Challenges video in my Destiny 2 playlist here on YouTube. It'll show you how to use the plates. So to start off, do the thing with the levers and then come on in. Make your way to the switch. And this, of course, will lift you up to the area I like to call the starting point because there's two sections to this large underbelly base area of the raid basically there's a ramp in front of you which is going to be area one and then to our left that will take you to area two we need to go straight into the first area so as you fly up just stay straight take the ramp in front of you and once you get to the first closed door this will be the transfer area go ahead and open the door and then take an immediate right go ahead and run right past the watcher jump up and then follow that tunnel you're going to want to take your first right it's actually the only way to go once you're in here. But if you use the pressure plate method I talked about earlier, then this door right here would have opened and you could have come in this way. It cuts your trip pretty much in half. So if you did come in this way, then go ahead and take your first left. Just get into this red tunnel no matter how you came and follow it until you reach the blue room. Take your first left after you leave the blue room and this puts you in the aqueduct. Now all you have to do here is not die, make your way through this little spiraling Archimedes screw thing and then take a left once you're through it. Simply follow this all the way up and the door on your right hand side at the top will open once you reach it. And ta-da! This, my friend, is Bathers. Super handy for prestige mode because the Castellum absolutely sucks on prestige mode. But that really about does it, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to pick up your treasure chests from Kate. Hopefully they won't be empty like last week, but that is it, guys. Happy Halloween once again, y'all. And for you PC peeps, enjoy the raid. Keep an eye out for my challenge mode guide, which I'll have out as soon as possible. All right, guys. So as always, thank you all so much for watching another Sly Nation Destiny 2 weekly reset guide. It is always, always awesome to be able to make these videos and guides for you all. So thank you for the support. And for those who are new to the nation, welcome. Subscribe for tons more D2 and gaming coverage. Spank the thumbs up only if you enjoyed yourselves and keep those eyes open for more vids coming out of Sly Nation in the very near future. But until then, this is your dude Sly and I'll catch you Guardians next time.